Hello everyone. Today's devotional reading will come from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, verses 11 through 13, where it is written, The Pharisees came and began to argue with him, asking him for a sign from heaven to test him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, Why does this generation ask for a sign? Truly, I tell you, no sign will be given to this generation. And he left them, and getting into the boat again, he went across to the other side. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The Pharisees demand a sign from Jesus because they don't believe in him, which is very bizarre. If you don't believe in me, why are you asking me for a sign? Because you want to see that uh, you're a phony. If I'm a phony, why do you even care? I'm just some passing huckster. A fool and his money is soon parted. It's in my uh, hand, I'm out the door. Bye. Off to the next town. If I'm a phony, why do you even care enough to ask me for a sign? So really the Pharisees are lying to themselves. If they really care, if they really thought he was a phony, they wouldn't care, period. But the fools spend their money that he's gone. Not our problem. The fact that you're here asking me this question means you know I'm not a phony. But you, but you want to see that I'm wrong. Give us a sign. Show us you can't do it. Okay, folks. Jesus, when he goes from town to town, is getting mobbed. And I mean mobbed by people because he's done sign after sign after sign after sign. Just like uh, Herod at uh, our Lord's trial. You're Jesus, that miracle worker? Give me a magic show. And Jesus does nothing. And Herod's like, all right, back to Pilate. You get the idea that Jesus is not our errand boy? That should be pretty clear in the text. No sign will be given to this generation. Well, is Jesus wrong? How many miracles has he done? There's his death and resurrection. Yes. Here's the thing. To a believer, it's enough. To a non-believer, someone who does not want to believe and admit they were wrong, you could do, turn the Skype around and write in flaming letters anything you want. You could levitate, you could blah, 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 fill in the blank. They'd find a reason not to believe it because they don't want to. The Lord says in the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, they don't believe Moses and the prophets. They will not believe even if someone rises from the dead. They want to disprove the Christian faith. Just show them the body of Jesus Christ. It's over. Why didn't the uh, Jewish authorities, Roman authorities, do that? Because there was no body. He had risen and then ascended. And so, you know, I guess the point I'd like to make here is you could say, God, give me a sign, give me a sign, give me a sign, give me a sign, give me the lottery number, have money fall out of the sky, have this big, amazing thing happen to me. That's not the right attitude. Miracles happen. It's not like, oh God, give, 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 give me, give me, give me. God already speaks to us in the scriptures. If we approach them prayerfully, you're going to learn something. God comes to us here. We meet him when we take of communion. We are become God's child when we're baptized and so on. God has left miracles in the sacramental life of the church in the scripture. Miracles sometimes happen on the outside world. The sacraments and scripture work because that's where Jesus said he would be. That's, he said that's where we could find him there. Miracles, they happen, but you can't set your watch by them. They're not consistent. They're nice little bonuses. Those that get miracles receive them humbly, going, thank you, God. Those that receive God in the word and the sacrament are faithful because they realize that's where God said he would be. He never guaranteed his action anywhere else. So we see the Pharisees had the wrong attitude. The wrong attitude exists today. Jesus says, Aaron, boy. That's not how it works. Our Lord is here where he said he'd be. And that's enough. The bonuses and miracles are nice too. But the Lord's here and that's enough. Not as our Aaron, boy, but as our Lord. He has us and that's enough. Let us close with prayer. Lord, be with us always. Lord, the sign of what you've given us is enough. Our baptism, receiving you in your body and blood, forgiving us, Lord, that's enough. 
the womb of God for the miracle of the resurrection of the last day. God, keep us into the faith until that day. Amen.